this is module number four summarizing the data tabular presentation section number two frequency distribution table so in this module we will see different kinds of frequency distribution tables so this is a tabular summarization of the data the first kind of table that we are going to see is called empirical frequency distribution or EFT so as you know the term empirical means something to do with experiment or the raw data right you are uh, you are actually accessing the data or you are actually generating the data by some experiments, a lab experiment for example. So that is called the empirical, empirical means the, the raw or experimental data. Frequency of an event is the number of times the event occurred in an experiment or the study. So the frequency is another term, empirical frequency distribution, the frequency means number of times the event has happened. So how frequently do you go to cinema for example? So how many times do you go to the cinema for in one month or one year? So that is called the frequency. You know the term frequency means number of times the event has happened. The empirical frequency distribution or EFD of the variable is a listing of the values or the ranges of the values of that variable or there is something called the bins together with the frequency that is also called F of X that is frequency of an event X with which these values or the ranges of the values occur. So we have, you can think bins as the real, you know, the, the literal bins which is marked and we are actually putting how many number, for example, if you are measuring the number of uh, the heights of the mango trees in a village, so I can mark one bin as, you know, uh, just take a, a plastic bucket and I mark it as the bin from 40 to 60 meters is one bin. The another bin will be 60 to 80 meters, another bin. The third bin will be 80 to 100 meters, another bin. So this way we can actually put number, how many mango trees have been measured between 60 meters and 80 meters in that bin. So that is called the frequency, empirical frequency distribution. Let us go back to our earlier example of the key punching errors. So this data set consists of number of er errors that the person has entered in each line. So if zero means one line has no mistake in it. This is not at all a summary at all. You know, as you can see that this, this particular table is a raw data, it is not yet summarized. So to summarize this raw data, first of all, we have to decide the bins and then we have to count how many key punch, for example, zero, how many elements are there with zero. I can put another bin as one and how many one error are there, you know, how many ones are there in this data set and I can also put as two, how many twos are there in this data set and another bin could be three or more, you know. So for example, five, six, seven, all those numbers, how many are there? So these are counts of frequencies. So I'm going to list it. So that way I can actually make a very a summary of the, that particular data set. As you can see that raw data set is extremely complicated. Well, you can see it though, yeah. although you cannot make any meaningful conclusions from that raw data set. But on the right side, you can see that empirical frequency distribution, this is a lot more uh, easier to comprehend. So as you can see that most of the errors were zero. So that means that no error at all. So that the person who has entered this typing is more or less a good typist. So how do you calculate or how do you decide the bin size? So in this case it's a count data so the bin size would be just how many errors so 0, 1, 2 or 3 or more. But in the case of um, a continuous variable, this is actually a discrete variable. In the case of continuous variable like for example height or weight, so you have to decide the bin range. So to, to decide the bin range a very good rule of thumb is that you have to calculate the root of that size. So as you remember, size is number of elements in the data set. So number of elements, you see number uh, that is called the sample size or n. So root of that particular thing and you have to divide the range with uh, this, uh, this root so that you are going to get it. So count the number of data points that is the sample size, then take the square root of the number of data points and round up or down to determine the number of bins required. So that is that many uh, bins are required. So the root, square root of the size is the number of bins you need and range divided by uh, the range is is, uh, is exactly the, the, the bin size. So it's only a rough guideline and may, may not be applicable to all the cases. So the, uh, for example, the key punching as you have seen that the key punching is a discrete one. So this rule is not applicable to it. 
So, empirical frequency distribution, another example is SIDS, so sudden infant death syndrome. So, this table is a raw data, the first table is a raw data of the days, you know, has been taken for the SIDS to happen. So, before the SIDS has been documented in each case, how many days have passed. So, this you can actually convert that into a frequency distribution by calculating uh, the root of that, that size. Uh, size of the bin which is uh, 78, so that comes to be 8.8 .8, which is approximately 9. So, 9 a number of bins you need to have it. Then you will have to calculate the, the minimum and maximum. So, what is that actually the maximum value and what is the minimum value and you calculate the range. So, the range divided by uh, this uh, bin size would be uh, number of bins required would be the bin size, so which is coming to be 30. Uh, you know, you can actually approximate this 31.6 to 30. So, that is, uh, th that is the bin range. So, you can actually calculate 1 to 30 days, how many deaths. Then 31 to 60 days, how many deaths. So, that table is called empirical frequency distribution table. It is very, very simple. So, e EFD tables are nothing but counts of the events. Here is another table, this is the raw data of the blood group measurements of the 10 students. So, each student, how, what are their blood group? Again, this is not a summary, this is just the raw data. You can summarize it just by looking the counts. So, B plus how many other, A plus or uh, AB plus, AB negative or the total. So, you can do this summary. So, as you see that this is a discrete set. So, the bin you do not really need it. So, you just have to look at that and decide what kind of bin you have to use it. So, the rule of thumb is not applicable in this case. So, another example would be that the, the dihybrid cross of the mental Grigor mental round yellow how many other or wrinkled green how many seats are there all those counts you can do that and decide and uh, the number of uh, bins required for it and then present that in EFD. Another example is heights of the mango trees from a plot in Punjab while the sample size is 100. So, you can first of all in this data set 100 is there. So, you first you calculate the range that is the mini maximum minus minimum and divide this range with the root of the sample size. So, the root of sample size is 100, the root of it is 10. So, divide the range with this 10 to decide the you know the bin size. So, total number of bins is root of the sample size, the above example sample size is 100, therefore the number of bins required is root of 100 that is 10. To estimate the bin size, we have to find the range of those data set that is maximum minus minimum. So, and divide this value with uh, you know total number of bins that is square root of the sample size. So, max in the table is 90 while min is 41. Therefore, the range is 90 minus 41 that is 49 and therefore, the size is range divided by the total number of bins. So, 49 divided by 10 is equal to 4.9 which is roughly equal to 5. So, 5 would be the, uh, uh, the bin size. So, it is it could be like 1 to 5 then 6 to 10. So, those way you can actually uh, you can uh, calculate the EFD of that mango tree data you know. That is what it is presented in this table that is empirical frequency distribution of the mango tree table. Another kind of table is known as empirical relative frequency distribution table or ERFD table. So, empirical relative as you see it is the relative is the only difference here. It is not the empirical frequency but it is a relative. It terms that means it is relative to the total. So, each value is dividing with the total to get the relative frequency distribution. Why do we have to do this relative thing? Because if you do this relative, uh, then you can compare across the data set. So, ERFD is a lot more better if you would like to compare uh, the data set for example, uh, that of the India with the United States or Japan or Germany. So, for that you have to do this relative uh, uh, transformation. So, where the frequencies have been divided by the sample size. So, relative means relative to the total a proportion expressed as a fraction between 0 and 1. So, it is always a proportion. So, if you divide with the sample size, so the total number of element is nothing but sample size in the frequency. So, if you add up all the frequency, it is going to be the sample size. So, if you divide with the sample size, you are going to get the, the relative frequency of it.
So another example for the empirical relative frequency distribution is this table. Table on the left side is the, the normal, uh, that means the empirical frequency distribution of uh, systolic blood pressures of uh, three different populations. You can see that uh, uh, native Japanese, then California Issei, that is the first generation of the immigrants to the California, and California Nisei, that means second generation of the uh, uh, immigrants to the Californian state. So in this table, these numbers represent the counts, you know, between uh, systolic blood pressure from X to Y, how many are there. So these three populations, if you want to compare between all these populations to make some informed guess, so you have to express in terms of relative. So the table on the left is empirical frequency that can be converted to the relative by converting each value by dividing that value with the total. So the total in a frequency distribution is always a sample size. So you are dividing each value with the total to get the value onto the right side. So to, to convert that into the relative uh, frequency distribution. So you can also do the same thing for our earlier examples as well. Uh, for example, 100 mango trees. So you can convert that, uh, uh, you know, the empirical frequency into the relative frequency by just by dividing each value with the sample size. In several of our day-to-day -day life, you have seen that these are actually not even relative, but this is something called cumulative measurement. One good example would be your electricity meter. It never decreases, right? It only increases, but the way it increases, the speed at which it increases differs from the month to month. So these are called cumulative. Cumulative is added upon to the earlier data. So if, for example, if the unit of last month was 1,200, and this month it, the unit is 1800. So then you can actually make out how much units have been consumed in this month, right? So these are called cumulative measurement. Well, another example would be, uh, you know, the odometer in your car. So again, that it, it, it is never decreasing, it only increases, but the, 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 the speed at which it increases changes. So that is called the cumulative frequency, uh, cumulative. Now, in the case of cumulative frequency, you are simply adding upon the earlier one to get into the, the new one. For example, heights of the mango tree, if I ask in the relative table, if I ask how many are less than 36 centimeter tall, it's not easy unless you convert this table into the cumulative frequency distribution. So to convert that cumulative uh, frequency, it's actually very simple. First value is same. Then the second value that is in from the, uh, I'm saying the empirical, not the relative, the empirical frequency is uh, the, the second column of this particular data. From the empirical frequency, conver converting that into empirical cumulative frequency, first value is same, second value will be, second value plus first value is the value on your right side. Third value will be first, second and third value will be on your right side. So that way you can actually convert into cumulative frequency distribution just by adding everything on the above or everything on top. So cumulative frequency distribution is, uh, as I told you, this is just a cumulative function of the uh, normal frequency, empirical frequency distribution. And this can also be used in relative frequency, you know, as I told you, empirical relative frequency distribution is relative to the total. And the same empirical relative frequency distribution can be converted into empirical cumulative relative frequency by cumulative function of it. So just by adding uh, all the values uh, above, above the, the total. So the same thing for the mango trees also you can generate very easily just by adding the, the values one upon the other one. And uh, the same thing, the cumulative re relative frequency distribution for the SITS uh, data set also you can actually make it or also for the Mendel's uh, dihybrid cross. Let this be an exercise for you to make relative frequency distribution as well as cumulative function. So frequency distribution and probability distributions are quite similar. You should know that probability distribution and frequencies are very similar. So frequency distribution presented in the bar chart is called histogram that we are going to see that in the, in the next module. So if you can, you can present either frequency distribution in the tabular form or uh, visually, visually via uh, histogram. So n never both, you don't really have to do that both ways because that is simple data redundancy. So in summary, frequency of an event is the number of times that event occurred in an experiment or study. Empirical frequency distribution is a table consisting of values or ranges of values of that variable. These are called bins 
along with the frequencies of such values. So that is called the empirical frequency distribution. An empirical relative frequency distribution or ERFD is an empirical frequency distribution where the frequencies have been divided by the sample size. So each frequency you are dividing with the sample size to get the relative function. Cumulative relative frequency distribution or CRFD of a variable is a listing of the values of that variable together with the proportion of the observations less than or equal to that value that is a cumulative proportion while cumulative frequency distribution of CFD are the cumulative values of the empirical frequency without converting that into the relative frequencies without transforming into the relative values or the proportions. So that is the difference between the two things. Thank you.